Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Unapologetic Live. I'm your host, Amla Epinobi, and Taylor's in the house today. Happy Monday. <laughs> happy Monday. You know, I wanted to say happy Monday, but your girl's about to rant today. I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I know I ranted on Friday, but I'm about to rant again because I've seen the most crazy story break out over the weekend. Here's the headline. Minneapolis mom confronts BLM protesters after apartment shooting. Quote, not a George Floyd situation. Look at this woman here. You're about to see a fiery video from her once we get into it. Let's talk about the background of the situation first, because when I tell you I was flabbergasted, I was dumbfounded, I was knocked over the head with this story. Hearing it is the most clown world example I've ever gotten (laughs) of the world that we are living in right now. So this woman right here, this woman in this picture, who looks very, very angry, and, and is rightfully so, is a single mother, okay? And she's a single mother who has been living in Minneapolis with her children, and I want you to, I want to see, I want you guys to see what her apartment looked like, okay? Here we go. You're wondering, what is this mess? What's going on in her apartment? Why is it so, d- oh, it's because a gun was shot through her apartment walls. Look at that. Bullet holes. So this young woman, this young single mother who's living in an apartment with her two children had her apartment shot into. If you're wondering who did that, why would somebody shoot into an apartment of a single mother and two kids? It's this young man right here. His name is Andrew Techley Sunberg. And this name has been circulating all over the internet, all over Twitter, not because he is a criminal and people are calling out, calling him out for it. Not because he shot into this woman's apartment. It was subsequently in a six-hour standoff with Minneapolis police before getting shot and killed. Not for any of those things. Not for a condemnation of his actions. Not for people calling him out and saying this is a disgusting and horrifying story. No, but people shouting, say his name with Black Lives Matter. People saying, this death is not deserved. How dare the police kill a young black man? This guy's 20 years old who decided to do this, to shoot into this woman's apartment and cause the wreckage that I just showed you. So he shoots into this woman's apartment with her and her two kids there on a Wednesday night, is subsequently shot and killed by police, and now people are out in the streets marching for him. Not for her, not for her two children, one of whom happens to be black. So one of them who happens to be a black life, they're not out there marching and in, in, in rallying for those children, for their protection, to fix culture, to fix the problem of violence in these communities. No, they're out rallying for the attempted murderer, this guy right here. Now, I want to show you a video before we get in depth and talk about some of the other issues that have popped up. I want to show you this mother reacting to these people. These people showed up outside her apartment complex where she lives with her children where she has just gone through this traumatic experience of having a young man shoot into her apartment and nearly kill her and her kids. And the protesters show up and are blocking her her livelihood, getting in her way, causing a nuisance for her in his name. Here's her reaction to that. And you my idols because you guys are celebrating his life. It was a terror. I'm sure it was a it's terror. It's not okay. Not okay. You're alive. Okay. Shut up. You guys need to just let it go. Did you hear that? You're alive. Shut up. You're alive, shut up. (laughs) They feel bad for him because he died at the hands of police officers while trying to kill somebody, while frivolously shooting a firearm into this woman's apartment with her children. You could have had three innocent people dead at the hands of some maniac criminal with a gun. And they're telling her, shut up, you're alive. Grief in silence. This is not okay. This is not a George Floyd situation. George Floyd was un- unarmed. He was unarmed. You're alive. This is not okay. <gasps> oh my my kids have to deal with this and probably have a mental illness now because they almost lost their life. There's bullet holes in my kitchen Not because he though. sat in the fucking hallway watching my move. I wish it never happened either. That I don't have a place to call home. I can't sleep that night. She's obviously going through a moment. This is not. She's obviously going through a moment. She said, "There's bullet holes in my apartment," and the guy responds, "But not in you, though." She's going through a moment. 
all of them should be going through a moment of praising the police officers who were involved in this situation. Nobody wants anybody to die, but when you go into a situation with a firearm and you're shooting at, at little kids and a single mom, what do you expect to happen? I mean, stupid game, stupid prizes, dangerous game, dangerous price. You get shot by, at, by police officers when you try to kill other people. And if I was in the situation that she was in, I would hope, I would hope that police officers were there as fast as they can to handle whatever person was trying to do that to me and my kids. And to have a group of people show up and celebrate the life of somebody who was engaged in such an act, how ignorant do you have to be? And you know the ignorance is, is it runs deep because they saw a headline, they saw a picture of this guy and they go, he's black and a police officer killed him. That means we have to take to the streets. That means we have to show up where the situation happens. That means we have to go to this woman's apartment complex and be out there yelling his name outside her apartment complex after he tried to kill her. That's where we need to be. Ignorance, ignorance, ignorance. I don't care! This is what they want to show on the TV. This is what they want to show on TV. The victim of the the victim of the attempted murder. This is what they want to show on TV. The real life situation. The real true victim. I sure as hell hope that's what they want to show on TV. If they go on TV the next night and they go, rest in peace, Andrew Techley Sundberg, who died tragically in a, in an innocent altercation with Minneapolis police. That would be a lie. That would be propaganda. But that's what people want to see. They want to see lies. They want to see propaganda. And the fact that you can just so simply look at somebody and go, he's black, must have been innocent. He's black, didn't deserve it, is ridiculous. And this is how far we've gone with identity politics, that you look at somebody and you just automatically assume everything about their character just by looking at them. It doesn't matter if they've committed the most heinous crime that led to their demise. That doesn't matter anymore. All that matters is his skin tone. That's it. It's not okay to go home! They're telling her, like, you know how in in the Truman Show, you know, Jim Carrey's walking around this fake world and he's he's recognizing that everything is fake and he's trying, he's trying, he's trying to get somebody to listen. He's trying to tell them, you know, this is, this is not where I'm supposed to be. This is not real. This is not real. And everybody's just looking at him like he's crazy and, and yelling at him and telling him that he's the crazy one. That is exactly how this woman must feel. Imagine going through a situation like that and you just try to come home with your kids. You're trying to take your kids back to the home that they know. And suddenly there are all these people out here telling you that this is not the time and place for you. Your own home where you live, which was invaded by this criminal. It's not the time for you. How, how crazy and frustrated must you feel as an individual to have to come home to this while trying to protect your children at the same time and deal with this? And all in the name of what? Black Lives Matter? When she's got a black child waiting in the car. Not that that should even matter. But if that's your baseline for caring about a situation or for thinking somebody's innocent, that kid should come first. But no, it doesn't to these people. And the, for them to go, oh, well, that's what they're going to show on the news. I can't believe they're going to show this on the news. I have no words. You know, we talk about how crazy wokeness is, how crazy things like critical race theory are and Black Lives Matter and these organizations. And we see the stories and we see the riots and the protests and we go, it's not going to get, how could it get crazier than this? How could you get more delusional than this? This is the most delusional thing I've ever seen. To quite literally celebrate and uplift a criminal right in the face of, of his victim. Right in the face of his victim. You know, with George Floyd, there's a lot of speculation. We all went back and forth on that. We, you know, and the general consensus was he was probably committing a crime. He was probably on drugs. But Derek Chauvin shouldn't have done that maneuver and he shouldn't have done it for as long as he did. This situation is cut and dry. Shooting into an apartment with a single mom and kids. Doesn't even matter if there was a single mom and kids in that apartment. You're shooting a gun all over the place frivolously in an apartment building. And then you get sniped by a police officer. I'm so sorry. But why would you do that? It's quite literally what you asked for. You asked to be shot and killed by police. And just to have people just suspend their reality so much that they're willing to be outside this woman's household blows my mind. And it's not just that. Let's keep 
reading. So a GoFundMe was set up for this guy, Andrew Techley Sunberg. Now has over $15,000. Now this was July 16th. It's probably more so than that now. It is outraising the victim, outraising the single mother because somebody created a GoFundMe for her. So now you have people giving their money to this man. Look at that picture. Look at that. Let's, let's fund that. And, and GoFundMe, is, of course, has left the page up. They're allowing it to go on. Here's the, the single mother and the gun violence survivor, $2,200. Honoring Techly and funeral expenses, $15,000. And you know what? Give your money to them. Give it. If you are that ignorant to give your money to somebody who has died trying to kill a woman and, sh a woman and her children, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I guess that's your money well spent. If, if that's your opinion and that's how ignorant you are. Not only that, let's look at GoFundMe. We know the history of GoFundMe. You know, they shut down the Canadian trucker convoy protest uh, funds. So we know that they are completely corrupt in that sense. They shut down the funding for Kyle Rittenhouse, people who wanted to get him lawyers to defend himself and his, his self-defense case. We know they're corrupt when it comes to that. Recently, a man by the name of Jose Alba, who was working at a bodega, a, a man walked in, tried to attack him, and he, this is an old man. Jose Alba was a old man. A man came in, tried to attack him, a very young man, got him down to the ground. Jose Alba luckily had a knife, stabbed the man. The man did die. Jose Alba was arrested and is now going through the throes of, of having to go to court and figure out what's going to be the conviction against him, whether or not he's going to be charged with all of this. Uh, and GoFundMe deleted his page too. So that's three. Canadian Trucker Convoy, Kyle Rittenhouse, the GoFundMe page for Jose Alba, who was a, a, a victim of a crime and had to defend himself in order to not lose his life. But they allow this page to be up for this young man who shot into his apartment. Oh, see, look, we jumped from 15,000 to 17,000. And again, this was on July, uh, July 17th. Uh, so who even knows what we're at now uh, in, in how much money this person has raised. <laughs> I just don't know how deluded you have to be to allow this to be the storyline that you spin. I, I quite literally don't get it. But that is what happens when you go, you're no longer a person or an individual who I care about. You know, your morals, your values, your character, your achievements. You are only your skin color. And black skin color is good. White skin color is bad. As far as all the in-betweens, who really cares? Who really cares? Because you have a brown woman here with, with a black child who nearly got killed, but the victim was a black male in the case, in this case of the, the police brutality. So that's the person we're going to march for. That's the person we're going to rally for. That's the person we're going to raise money for. And as long as we live in a culture like this, things like this are going to continue to happen. You know, we talk so much about how much we value black life and, and how, how the likelihood of a black person dying at the, at the end of a gun is far more than any other race. But we don't talk about who the culprit normally is. And this picture right here, it's, I don't care if you're offended by me saying this, that's typically the culprit. Looking at the rates of criminality, looking at the numbers on the books, that's typically the culprit. That's not an offensive thing to say, that is just the reality. And if we do not address that reality and go, hey, we have a problem here. We have something that needs to be fixed here. We're gonna continue to get stories like this. We're going to continue to have situations where young black males like himself put himself in harm's way by committing an act of violence or a crime, you know, faces the consequences of their actions at the hands of police officers. And then another rally starts and then another protest starts and then another riot starts. And it's going to happen cyclically until we address the heart of the issue, which is the fact that this man should have never been committing that crime in the first place. What led to that? But instead... Instead, we get tweets like this. I want to show you. This is uh, attorney Ben Crump. This is what he tweeted out. This is Techley Sunberg. Minneapolis Police Department killed this smart, loving, and artistic 23-year-old after an hours-long standoff while he was experiencing a mental health crisis. We need answers from MPD as to why Techley's mental health crisis became a death sentence. I, I am at a loss for words. Clown 
world delusional, delusional, delusional. I want to know what Mr. Ben Crump would expect if somebody was at his door shooting into his house. What response would you want from police? Do you want them to show up and go, uh, sorry, chief, we got a black guy outside. Uh, we're going to have to stand down. We're just going to have to wait and see how this goes. Oh, no, there's a black guy inside the house. Who are we supposed to defend? I have no idea. Let's just let the situation play out. And let's just see what happens and see who dies. And we'll put our hands behind our back. We'll handcuff ourselves instead and let the situation, you know, take its course. That's essentially what we are asking for in today's day and age. Because you care more about what somebody looks like than what they're doing. You care more about a superficial identity than the actual heart of what somebody is doing and, and what their actions portray. Because if I was in the situation of this mother, I would hope, as I said before, that police would show up as soon as they possibly can and get rid of this threat. If you are trying to kill somebody, harm others, you better believe I'd want police officers to come and take care of you. And that's the end of it. I'm sorry if you're going through a mental health crisis. However, am I supposed to let a single mother and her children bear the brunt of your mental health crisis when you're shooting a firearm into their apartment? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You weigh out your options there, and unfortunately, the best option is to take care of the suspect in this case. What else could you have possibly wanted them to do? And this is your smart, loving, artistic 20-year-old. I don't know how you hoes be doing it. Me, personally? If a bitch came to me as a, as a woman, I'm coming to her as a bullet. I'm coming to her as a bullet. And didn't he? Isn't that exactly what he did? And, you know, if I was in the position of somebody, you know, working with Black Lives Matter or who supported the organization, I would look at a situation like this and go, what a shame. This is a shame that he is perpetuating the, the problem. He's quite literally fitting into what is now a cultural stereotype that has been created from young, by young black men from their own actions. And how dare he do that to somebody? Because now, when you see real instances of police brutality, where a police officer is actually overutilizing the power that they've been given, how are you going to call it out when you got your fellow Black Lives Matter friends and, and activists saying that this is an instance of police brutality? It's not going to mean anything anymore. It's just like when you call people white supremacists and racists, like people are going to call me for saying what I'm saying right now. The word means nothing anymore. Police brutality is not going to mean anything anymore if you use it to characterize a situation like this. So hopefully y'all look into this. Check it out. Support the mom if you like. If you can do so financially, go check out her GoFundMe and put something towards that rather than this guy who shot into her apartment and nearly killed her and her children. And... For the organizations that some of these people claim to be with, we're talking like this attorney, we're talking Black Lives Matter, you should come out and have a full condemnation of everything that you've seen here. Black Lives Matter should come out and in a statement on Instagram say we in no way, shape, or form stand by the actions of Andrew. And his death was brought upon him by himself, not because of police brutality, not because of an overutilization of power. That's exactly what they should do. You should distance yourself from the story as much as you possibly can because right now people are taking the moniker of BLM and saying this is a situation that BLM needs to get behind. You should be so against this in every way, shape, or form. Just the amount of idiocy that I've witnessed this past weekend blows my mind. Well, It makes me want to laugh even though it's not a situation that warrants laughing. It makes me want to laugh how crazy this is. And yes, clearly we have a cultural problem with not only young black men, just young men in general and violence. Young men in general and violence. And it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop if this is the way that we continue to address it. And that's all I have to say on today's program. Comment down below. Have you heard about this story? When you did hear about this story, what were your initial thoughts? Can you believe that protesters showed up to this woman's apartment to essentially harass her and her children while they are going through this traumatic situation and still recovering from it? Can you believe that? If there's a point that I did not make that you wish I had, put it down in the comments down below. If there's a point that I made that you think is wrong and you wish to rebut, put that down in the comments below. And again, yeah, just give me your general thoughts on this situation. Because I think this is the farthest that something like BLM or the activists behind it have ever blown my mind. And I hope, again, as an organization, they come out and step as far away as they can from being associated with this specific situation. 
I will see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we come up with a new video. Bye, guys.